Hello and welcome. Today we invite you on a journey into one of the most fascinating and sweetest industries in modern agriculture. The story of sugarcane. Sugar is something so common in our lives in coffee desserts and even in foods we don't expect. Yet few people know the scale of effort, technology, and tradition hidden behind every grain. In the United States, sugarcane has become a foundation of the farming sector, producing millions of tons of sugar year after year. The largest fields are concentrated in Louisiana, Florida, and parts of Texas. These areas blessed with sunshine, long growing seasons, and nutrient-rich soil provide an environment where cane thrives growing into tall, lush stalks swaying under the southern sky. By 2025, sugarcane in America remains central to domestic sugar supply alongside sugar beets. Together, they cover nearly all the sweetener needs of the country. Louisiana alone produces over 15 million tons of cane annually, while Florida contributes close to 18 million. These harvests sustain thousands of farming families and feed a network of modern processing plants. From these plants come not just refined sugar, but molasses, ethanol, electricity, and even environmentally friendly packaging materials. But how does a raw stalk of cane turn into the sparkling white crystals that fill our sugar bowls? The story begins far earlier than harvest. It begins in the soil. Farmers understand that healthy soil is the very first requirement for a successful crop. After every season, heavy tractors and advanced plows break up hardened ground, improving aeration and water movement. This process allows cane roots to grow deep and strong the best soils for sugarcane are often river-borne alluvial deposits, especially in regions like the Mississippi Valley. These soils combine fertility with the right texture to hold moisture while avoiding stagnant water. Soil chemistry is also carefully checked. A pH between 6 and 7 ensures cane plants can absorb essential nutrients. When acidity drifts too high, lime is applied to restore balance. Alongside soil preparation, farmers carve deep parallel furrows into the land. GPS guided tractors ensure that these furrows are perfectly straight, not only helping later irrigation, but also maximizing efficiency when harvest time comes. Unlike wheat or corn, sugarcane doesn't grow from seed. Instead, new fields are planted using cane sets, short sections of stalk about one to two feet in length, each carrying several buds. Each bud is capable of producing roots and new shoots once buried. Modern planters automate this process, feeding stalks into furrows, laying them at precise angles covering them with soil and ensuring uniform spacing. This precision matters. Poorly spaced cane means wasted land and lower yields. But with modern equipment, farmers in Louisiana, Florida, and Texas can plant hundreds of sets per minute, stretching perfect rows of future sugar cane across the horizon. It is the first step in the transformation that will end months later as sugar crystals in kitchens across America. Once the cane sets are in the ground, the real challenge begins nurturing them into strong, towering stalks. Sugar cane is a thirsty and nutrient-hungry crop demanding careful attention from the first weeks after planting. Water is the lifeblood. In Louisiana and Florida, natural rainfall provides part of the need, but rarely enough. That is why modern sugarcane farms depend heavily on advanced irrigation systems. Among these drip irrigation, 
has become the gold standard. Black tubing lined with tiny emitters snakes along every furrow. Each emitter delivers a slow, steady trickle of water directly to the root zone. This targeted method minimizes waste cutting water use by up to 40% compared to traditional flood irrigation. On larger fields, sprinkler systems are deployed, casting a fine mist across acres of young cane simulating gentle rainfall. And in some low-lying areas, controlled flooding is still used, though carefully managed with gates and pumps to prevent overwatering. But water alone cannot support sugarcane's rapid growth. Fertilization is just as critical. The plant requires a balanced mix nitrogen and to fuel leafy shoots phosphorus to strengthen roots and potassium to enrich the juice stored inside the stalk. Farmers deliver these nutrients with precision applicators that spray liquid fertilizer directly onto fields. Increasingly, drones are used flying over vast farms, applying nutrients exactly where needed, reducing labor and preventing waste. By mid-season, fields stretch endlessly filled with cane that can rise 10 to 15 feet tall. Under the southern sun, the leaves rustle like waves in the wind, hiding within them an immense reservoir of sugar building week by week. Every farming decision, by the time sugarcane stalks reach their towering height, often 10 to 15 feet, 15 feet tall, nearly a year after planting the fields are ready for harvest. This is the moment farmers work toward all season long, when each stalk is filled with its maximum sugar content. But getting those massive stalks out of the ground is no small task. In the past, nearly all sugarcane was cut by hand. Workers armed with machetes moved row by row, slicing the cane at its base, stripping away dry leaves, and bundling stalks into piles. It was brutal labor under intense heat, and even the strongest, most experienced workers could only manage a few tons a day. On small family farms, this tradition still survives, but across most of the U.S., hand harvesting is now rare. The modern landscape tells a different story. Harvest season today roars with the sound of giant machines. Specialized sugarcane harvesters, some standing as tall as a house roll methodically across the fields. At their base, spinning discs cut stalks cleanly just above the soil. Gathering drums pull the cane upright as it is sliced, feeding it swiftly onto an internal conveyor system. Inside, the harvester technology takes over. Powerful fans strip away leaves while rollers cut stalks into uniform billets, each about 18 to 20 inches long, the perfect size for transport and processing. The leftover plant matter instead of being burned as in decades past, is scattered back onto the field, enriching the soil as natural mulch. This eco-friendly method reduces pollution and prepares the ground for the next planting. A large hopper inside the machine collects the billets. From there, an extending arm transfers them directly into trucks driving alongside. The process is seamless, cut, clean, chop, and load, all in one continuous flow. A single harvester can process between 50 and 100 tons of cane per hour, an astonishing leap from the days of manual cutting. On big farms, multiple harvesters work together covering hundreds of acres in just a few days. Timing, however, is everything. Harvesting too early means the stalks haven't built up enough sucrose. Harvesting too late risks sugar loss and declining quality. That's why farmers monitor their fields closely testing juice samples and measuring sugar concentration before giving the signal for machines to roll in. 
Every decision, every cut is calculated to capture the cane at the peak of sweetness. And once cut, there is no time to waste because sugarcane begins losing sucrose content almost immediately. Once the cane is cut, speed becomes critical. Trucks line the field edges ready to receive loads straight from the harvesters. Within minutes, tons of billets are on their way to the mill. In Florida, even short rail lines are used to move entire train loads of cane, ensuring it reaches the factory the very same day. At the mill gates, each load is weighed and sampled. Technicians check sugar levels and impurities guiding payments to farmers and setting the stage for processing. The transformation begins immediately. Cane is washed, then crushed by massive steel rollers. that squeeze out every drop of sweet juice. What remains the fibrous bag ass isn't wasted. Instead, it fuels the mill's boilers, generating steam and electricity to power the entire plant. The extracted juice, meanwhile, is clarified, boiled, and concentrated into a thick, golden syrup. In vacuum pans, crystals begin to form shimmering with the promise of refined sugar. From syrup to crystal, the final stage of sugarcane's journey unfolds inside the refinery. The thick liquid is carefully purified filtered through carbon or sand beds and concentrated until brilliant white crystals emerge. These crystals are then dried, cooled, and sifted their size and texture checked at every step. Quality control is relentless. Samples are pulled from each batch tested for purity, moisture, and uniformity. Only those that meet strict U.S. standards move forward. From here, automated machines weigh and seal the sugar into everything from small household bags to giant industrial sacks destined for bakeries and food companies. Nothing is wasted. Molasses becomes animal feed ethanol fuel, or even rum. Bagasse the leftover fiber fuels boilers or is molded into eco-friendly packaging. In this circular system, every part of the cane serves a purpose, turning waste into resource. Beyond the machines and factories lies the human story. Farmers tending their fields under the southern sun. Scientists breeding stronger cane varieties workers. Running the mills day and night together. They sustain an industry that feeds a nation's sweet tooth. Sugar may seem ordinary, just another item on the kitchen shelf. But behind every spoonful lies months of planning, cutting edge technology, and thousands of hands working in unison. It is a story of resilience, innovation, and tradition woven into one. So next time you stir sugar into your coffee or sprinkle it over dessert, Take a moment to imagine the journey it has made from the fertile soils of Louisiana and Florida, through roaring machines and glowing refineries to your table. 
every grain carries with it not only sweetness, but the legacy of American agriculture. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of sugarcane. If you enjoyed this story of farming and transformation, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss the next adventure from the world of agriculture. Until then, goodbye.